it gives you diarrhea before you're done eating it. <laughs> I don't think that's how the body works. <laughs> Welcome to Film House. Today's episode is brought to you by Hims, a one-stop shop for hair loss, skin care, and sexual wellness for men. We'll hear more about them later in the show. Uh, thank you guys for being here for this episode of Film House. Of course. Adam Kovic is seeing Avengers Infinity War right now, so he couldn't be here. He's working in Austin. I don't think that's what he's doing. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That news traumatized me. What? She's trying to tie it into the theme of the show. I know, which news, though? That news of Adam Kovic being in oh. Austin, I guess. <laughs> the, uh, well, yes, thank you, James, for pointing that out. Uh, the theme of today's show is childhood trauma, specifically movies that messed us up. Are you intentionally doing, like, a PBS host? That's what I was what thinking. What are you talking about? I was about? just thinking that. You're like, and today we're going to be talking about <laughs> trauma. <laughs> No, that's just that's just how I do it. Yeah. Uh, well, I've gathered here a panel of childhood trauma experts. <laughs> Tra uh, childhood traumatists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. James Willems. Hello. Thank you. Bruce I'm Green. Traumatized. I'm very traumatized. John Smith. Hello. He, he can't even speak. He forgot to I'm, speak. Is, we're going back into the, the memory banks, and it's really affecting me. John is promoting his textbook, which comes on sale next week. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, A24 has a new horror movie coming out June 8th called Hereditary. What's it about? I want to know. James and I watched this trailer uh, in front of a movie, a movie a few weeks ago. Can't remember what. I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Is it scary? Movie it's A24, it. so you it's, know it's going to be good. You know it's going to be good. Right? That's it's what I'm saying. Uh, Are they the new Blumhouse? Kind of. I think they're both they're, they, they're both hot right now. They're both hot. <laughs> so hot. So, uh... We may not see the whole trailer, but it's an excellent trailer, and the the imagery is what's terrifying about it. Okay, all right. So the okay, so it's a scary movie. So yeah. intended to be scary, intended to be frightening. Got Tony Collette. Her mom dies. Look at this kid. Gabriel Byrne is sad. Oh, no, they have a but, mentally mentally disabled. But I don't know if they no, move know. into. She's just physically disabled. Oh, physically. Disabled. I can't tell if they move into her mom's house or what. My. But they move into the dollhouse. No. Well, untrue. Twist. The dollhouse is the house. They're all in a dollhouse anyway. That that guy was in like Jumanji. Beetlejuice. Wait, is this a twist though? Because if the if the movie reveals it, what? no, the movie wants to make you think that it's in a real world, but it's actually a dollhouse world. Everyone's in a dollhouse. It's got this weird looking girl in it. Oh, and she's yeah, what's she playing doing? with the dolls. I don't know. I don't like this at all. I'm already unsettled. Bruce, very it's creepy. awesome. It well, looks awesome. I'm, not, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. Did you ever see The Witch? Uh, I never did, but I heard it was very disturbing. Look at that. It's pretty weird. Pretty dark. Very slow. Um, but uh, but this is this is from the same the same gaggle of people. I don't think it's the same director, but I think it's the same same group. I forget that old woman's name, but she was in, she's in the leftovers and she was Helen Mirren. She was fantastic. Helen Mirren, not to <laughs> She's fantastic. Jumanji. What's going on? Yeah, it's all just scary. It's interesting how you can make like horror movies these days that are just weird imagery like truth or dare yeah. it's like like the oh, yeah, it's absolutely. like almost like a trailer determined what the movie would be mm -hmm. and so it's just got freaky shit in it cool. but then there's other horror movies that have academy award winning actresses like Tony Collette in it that uh, that are also just the same scary trauma but it looks like this yeah. ah. so this thing pops up all the fucking time on YouTube cancel can you get cancel Ooh, I can't! Oh, I can't! Oh, oh no, the Avengers! Well, we got it. So, that, that <laughs> thumbnail pops up all the time on thumbnail. YouTube. It's a good thumbnail. Javier Bardem, right? Oh, is that who that is? I think it's supposed to be, it's some Photoshop version of Javier Bardem where he's smiling oh, like as the Joker. The Joker. Oh. But I don't know uh. if it's from an actual movie, it's just always associated <laughs> with this trending video on YouTube. It's a great thumbnail. Yeah. Nice job, whatever you were. So why did you bring us here today to watch that trailer? So I think it's an excellent trailer. I think that movie is going to be great. And uh, specifically, it has a lot of excellent horror imagery in it mm -hmm. that stays with you. Mm -hmm. um, but this trailer was in the news recently because it accidentally pre-rolled during, uh, <laughs> during the trailer section 
of a children's matinee Peter Rabbit oh, no. screening in Perth, in Perth, Australia. I knew Bruce would, oh, that's so would great. like I this. It. I love it. So, yeah, it accidentally played. Whoops. Um, For didn't, Peter Rabbit. Yeah, didn't it and say that women and children were running out People screaming? fled <laughs> screaming, covering their children's, <laughs> their children's eyes. Man. They're both stories and, about family. And screaming at the projectionist to stop the movie. Um, the trailer showed scenes of scissors, like there, there are kids, kids watching scissors being driven to that pigeon's yeah, neck. That's right, we just you saw know, that. The, the kid smashing his head on the desk. Um, <laughs> and uh, I know. <laughs> Just that little girl. A- A24 could not have asked for better marketing. Oh, absolutely. And like Peter Rabbit's doing gangbusters at the box office. <laughs> so like, of course, you know, the two tied together. And plus A24 had a really darkly uh, cheeky com- uh, comedic response to the whole debacle. They they tweeted and said, uh, "We'll consider subsidizing child therapy." Oh. So they weren't they didn't weren't Good really like necessarily apologetic about it. Obviously, it wasn't their mistake. It was the theaters. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a really funny <coughs> thing. And now all these kids are hopefully, fingers crossed, going to be traumatized for life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, they will I'm be. just kidding. But it, it that made me think of the stuff that sort of stuck with me when I was a kid, Mm -hmm. that whether I was intentionally or unintentionally supposed to watch, um, that that just stayed with me. And so I thought that'd be a fun topic for us to talk about. And it might, might, you know, people in the comments might share their own. It's funny because this situation, this traumatic situation was an accident. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Trauma for people in our age demographic was intentional. Like, Like you had HBO or Home Box Office, that channel, and they would run whatever fucking shit they wanted at any time. Like they wouldn't show hardcore pornography, but everything else was fair game. You weren't supposed to watch in, it in the though. middle of the day. What, wasn't supposed to watch it. What am I supposed to do? It's Saturday at like 3 p.m. <laughs> I, I remember my parents used to limit that because they knew that like HBO and those sorts of things. Like we didn't have HBO, but they like cable. They would when I was a kid, when I was like eight or nine, they would be like, "You can't watch these channels." And then I would still watch them. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. <laughs> but when they walked, say you can't. But when they walked in, they would be like, "Hey, you turn that away." And that was so. They think they avo- I, they avoided a lot of childhood trauma for me, but not the most. But the thing is, the th- movies from like 1982 <laughs> through 1989 does four kids were designed to fuck their shit up. I was just about to say, yeah, that like PB Herman. Okay, so that's on my list. Yeah. At least let us know what we were talking about beforehand. Yeah. And I made a list of movies yeah, that me traumatized too. me. Me too. Pee Wee's Big Adventure is a dark comedy marketed towards children. It is, yeah. Yeah. Even though it's not really a kid's movie. Well, your mom loves it, right? Well, my mom just yeah. loved the character of Pee Wee. Well, it's a great movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was just a I silhouette know. on the door. It was like door. human centipede what? behind us. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> but, but that scene with Large Marge, like you, it'd be like a whole movie that's normal to watch. And it's because it is. Most of it's normal, except for that except one scene. Except for that one scene, and then when he has the nightmare that the devil cl- devil clown doctors are taking oh, his bike yeah. apart Holy and he's playing a terrifying song. Yeah, and it's a devil clown doctor, <laughs> <laughs> and they just hit you with this shit over and over. But it was it was like rated G. <laughs> what? Yeah, that that one scene where I think it's Large Marge turns to him and her yeah. like her face. What is it? What, what her face like animates or something? Yeah, she goes into claymation it and her is eyes bug out and her hairs go crazy. I because I remember when I, I watched it later when I was like, and he looked just like that. Oh no, no, that's that's super. This is the wrong rabbit, one. Which yeah. is also, yeah. also terrifying. <laughs> yeah, that's also really yeah, that, scary. That what did she scene say? from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Who Framed Roger Rabbit scared the shit out of me too. That's a great movie though. An old night and, and that a dark night just like this, and Pee Wee's getting scared. <laughs> And someone pull over just like this. That that movie, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, though that wasn't that wasn't really marketed towards kids per se. Pee Wee Herman. Supposed to be no no oh. uh, Roger Rabbit. It was supposed to be a little older. I guess, but it still had Bugs Bunny I, I and know, you're right. You're Mickey right. Mouse. Yeah, you're right. yeah they're, they're trying to. It's fuck like us Dumbo up. the Clown in they're, Trauma. They're trying to fuck us up. But oh, this makeup. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. This. No, raise the volume a little bit. Oh my gosh. So it's not that frightening when you're when you're like older. <laughs> oh my and you, god! You understand well, special and effects. The effects haven't held up. But when you're yeah. like seven, and Te- that hits you. Can you search Pee Wee Pee Wee Big Adventure uh, bike dream or nightmare? Oh man, those were these were frightening. There it is. This one bicycle, bicycle clown, clown dream. dream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I forgot about this scene. I forgot. This is after he crashes his motorcycle. He's in the hospital, and he has a dream about them taking apart his bike. 
Yeah, this whole fucking shit, man. But, so these kids have it good. This is their one moment. Oh, and it was an accident. Imagine yeah. being a child growing up where the entertainment is designed to fuck you. I, well, I, I really, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, I feel like part of becoming uh, like a sapient human uh, and breaking out and becoming independent was the act of going and watching TV at night and watching these things that you're not supposed to. Getting scared. Oh, yeah, yeah, whether they're traumatizing or tantalizing. Yeah. Uh, e Wild on E with Brooke Burke. I watched that all the I time. I used to watch that all yeah. the time when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, but yeah, also watch, like I think I watched Island of Dr. Moreau when I was like oh, five oh, years yeah. old. <laughs> I, I was pretty young when I saw that too. Oh, man. Um, but, Oh shit! But the the difference was that this was intended for a children's audience. Yes. So I I actually like I I really miss that people directors don't get this license to their movies to just make weird creepy shit that's directed toward children. Uh-huh. If that makes any sense. Did there, anyone see Wrinkle in Time? No. Maybe it's fucked up. Maybe it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is like a certain nostalgia to like. Kind of the weird and and irreverent stuff that directors used to make for child audiences. Yeah. At least you bring up an interesting point because I've I've often wondered now that I'm older, is it that I can't see it right? So like there maybe there are other kids watching other things that we all just sort of go ah whatever movie yeah. magic. But then they're seven years old and they see a special effect in a children's uh, show or movie, and they're they're fucking freaked out for all forever, all eternity. Well, let me ask you this, Bruce: Have you ever seen Return to Oz? I, oh, Once. that movie oh, okay. a long time ago. So, and it's super fucked up. When, when yeah. I was a kid, my I, when I was really really young, I loved Wizard of Oz. It's super fucked up. My mom hated Wizard Wizard of Oz, but she would re- rent me yeah, Return to it. Oz I hate it. constantly. Right? Why? And I, I don't know, but I never it got to watch accessible. Wizard of Oz, but this, I, I saw Return to Oz yeah. a ton. And the Wheelers, the Wheelers and Mombi kind of like well, but stick even the with woman, you. She had but a thousand heads. Mombi, yeah. <laughs> this, yeah, these are. Oh! This was frightening. But I feel like as, oh. an, as an adult. Fruza Balk. Yeah, Fruza Balk. Yeah. I feel like as an I'm adult, you might see this and be like, that's shit crazy. Yeah, I and mean, this was. You know? But I think, there are, I think there are movies out there like that this is now. Crazy. I just don't know what they are because I'm not a kid. I don't know if there are though. I think this is. I think society has shifted to be a little bit more protective. Yeah, and you can't it's, get that past the studio executive. It, like this is also a time of where you ever, all kids would join sports teams, and at the end one team would be a. They're the champions. Here's your trophy. But now it's like oh, everyone sorry. like no, it's just like not non-competitive. <laughs> We're not going to keep score. You know, it's it's a cha- everyone's a champion. Everyone gets a trophy kind of situation. Yeah. I don't know that it's necessarily better or worse, but man, just the difference. Of, there's something about growing up in this time. Where they were like fucking the the time before this was just a, a naive insensitivity mm-hmm. to children where they'd be like here's a cowboy toy go murder those Indians and <laughs> yeah. the kids would be like yippee uh, and they'll just like That's just, be you know, innocent. it's like stuff like that really really probably not the best messages you should be sending yeah. right. to kids also kids can get scared by like random shit yeah uh, like there's this <laughs> uh, there's this gif I saw of where you know someone in a Easter bunny outfit. Came to a party and he, <laughs> it was it is kind of scary though because he didn't like walk in with the parents. He popped his head over the fence oh. and these kids look up and I'll just start <laughs> screaming and running. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I actually wish that there are people in the comments that are parents uh, and have noticed like parents of seven or eight year olds and have noticed their kids getting scared by things that they wouldn't normally get scared by. Yeah, that's what I'd want to know because I, I again I have I don't have. But that is it scarier than clown devil doctors? I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know if it and is. You'll probably um, never know because you're not a kid. When I was, I think I've told you guys this story before. When I was four, the first movie I went to see in a theater was Ghost Dad with Bill Cosby. I saw Ghost oh Dad no! In the and uh, <laughs> I, you know, being a four year old. Um, uh, a full it's movie. So scary uh, ghost nothing scary, but when I was four, just knowing that it was a ghost? a ghost was enough to like scare me. <laughs> now that we know, especially now that we know, yeah. now like, that what we, we know, know about Bill Cosby. it's like, oh well, I, run, little girl, run, you know. <laughs> um, but uh, well, there'd be an interesting thing too, where there would be movies that were watchable, kind of like Pee Wee Herman, but then would have just like really horrific, scary things in it. So I think mm-hmm. of Witches, 
I saw witches. There are certain movies. Witches. My, I had a living room growing up, and the TV was at one end, and then we had a couch that was against the wall perpendicular to the TV, and then another couch that was parallel to the TV screen, which worked out great for me because it meant that I could still watch the movies that I wanted to watch, but retreat behind the couch to hide oh, yeah. for the scenes that scared <laughs> yeah. me. So I would watch the entirety of the film Witches. Roald Dahl's Witches, Angelica Houston, except for the scene when she took off her yeah. skin yeah, that's and right. her nose and she was this disgusting monster. Same with Pee-wee. I'd watch the whole thing and then I'd watch that whole scene until I knew what the line was. And then I would retreat to the couch, listen for it, and then I would return because <laughs> it was too scary to see. So like, there was a way to watch it almost, but now I don't. I don't well, know if there's that kind of situation. I couldn't even stay in the theater for Ghost Dad. I need. I really? needed. Oh, I got so four. upset. You so then four. my dad took me to see Jetson's movie instead. Which, if you know, Jetson's movie, you know, wholesome, h- horrible film. What? Oh, yeah, it's wholesome. Though. Terribly reviewed. Is it Jetson's Meet the Flintstones? No, no. What was the song not. from the Jetson's movie? Was there a Jetsons? Uh, Jetsons. I thought there was like bleep blop. Meet the Jetsons. They're uh, a futuristic uh, family. No, but wasn't, wasn't there like bleep blop, ziggle zogger, zigging 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 zigging? Bleep blop, people go zip zop zam. That's rocking with Judy Jetson. Oh, oh, that's another gosh. movie. Sorry, wow. guys. Um, um, so my. <laughs> there is Ghost. My personal situation? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lay it on us. Uh, so I was the third of three. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my dad had basically given up. Uh, on worrying about anything. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I got, I I wasn't raised, and I think this is kind of why I'm not into like cartoon movies and like, uh, anyways, the films that I first saw that I could remember were movies like uh, Gremlins Mm -hmm. and Die Hard. Those are two of the earliest movies and Tremors. Mm. Were three of the earliest movies I ever saw. I believe I saw Gremlins when I was four years old. Um, Gremlins can be scary. Gremlins can be very scary. Yeah, no, Gremlins, Gremlins and Gremlins um, are scary. Um, and I actually had recurring nightmares uh, and of about Gremlins until I was sixteen years old. What? Wow. Um, oh, still man. one of my favorite movies. But yeah, I had this recurring dream where it's it's funny because it ties together all this different stuff. I saw The Shining. As well, or parts of it, and I also saw Little Mermaid around that time. Huh. So the dream was that I would be running lost in a hedge maze with the dog from Little Mermaid, uh, and then I would come out to my Hollywood video, my local Hollywood video in Lemon Grove, and I'd go in, and there'd be all these gremlins laughing with cigars. <laughs> While all of the customers and employees were dead, hanging from piano oh my wires, my gosh! And I was like, ah! and I would run out back to the hedge maze, get lost, and then come back out to find the Hollywood video again and be like, maybe I'll be wow. different this time. That's frightening. And that was ten years of my life was. Wow. Never knowing See, when that dream was going to come. I had a similar experience seeing Gremlins really young, and the second one really young too. Um, but they they never did anything. Like for me, it never. Really didn't didn't hit for no. me. The, I remember the first Gremlins hit real hard for me, but the thing I always went back to with any horror movie, well, almost any, was that like Gizmo was good. Yeah. So for me, I was always like, if I'm with Gizmo, everything's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So that's that's what I always got. You say that now. <laughs> so for me, that was that's why I like real horror films. Like Hereditary looks kind of like that movie, where there is no resolution. Those frighten the hell out. I like. I, I don't want to go and watch those because I'll think about those for weeks. And yeah. and, and there's no there's no hope. You know mm-hmm. this uh, this most movies I would just accept that there was going to be a terrifying scene in it that I would avoid. But then there are some movies that were so scary that I never went back to rewatch the movie until like oh yeah like yeah. fifteen or mm-hmm. eighteen years Absolutely. later. Absolutely. And uh, one that falls into the ca- that category for me was Superman three. With Richard Pryor? With Richard Pryor. I never, I never saw that movie. Because at the very end, there's the, like two, there's Richard Pryor and then the two villains, and one brother and a sister, and then the blonde dits or whatever. Yep. Yep. And then this this scene where the woman... Is that oh, his dick? dick. <laughs> <laughs> In the world? Um, the sister, they're trying to flee this giant supercomputer that they've made. Oh, she's already in it. It's fucking terrifying. She gets pulled in. It's before this, but oh. she they're running, and then the computer reaches out and grabs the woman with cords and pulls her into the machine, oh. and she makes this 
horrible noise. This like <laughs> sounds like a dog being murdered as the machine replaces her body parts with robot parts. Oh my god! Oh, creates his monstrosity. Terrible. I was watching it at my friend's house. Got to that scene as she was like, <laughs> she's like makes these horrible noises, and then I got up off the couch. And I ran out the front door, and I Aww. ran all the way home. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was like, I'm never watching Superman 3 again. Yeah, she gets around the corner. This poor woman tries to get away. It grabs her. Oh, no. And she gets pulled in. Can you raise the volume? Yeah. If there is volume. The, the noise she makes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I was gone. I, I, I saw that. Oh, I was gone. That's frightening. So, I think what it is, it's like when you see like a human being helpless in a situation like that. Because for me, something that always stuck with me was Legends of the Fall, when his brother Samuel gets stuck on the um, barbed wire. Barbed wire, and I saw that way too young. Yeah. And then he's just getting shot up. Yeah. I I was like, oh, oh my god. I don't know if I've seen that. Like, I, oh. there's something about that stop action like where it's oh, the yeah. locked off shot of the woman with like different things happening to her as she's not moving yeah. there's something cuz that happens a lot in 80s movies yeah there's something about that that fucking freaks me out i hate it i can't stand raiders of the lost ark is the like the quintessential uh, scene with when his, when his face melts. Yeah, yeah. Because my parents would not let me watch that at all. Yeah, yeah. Because they knew the face melting scene was so frightening. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's that it's that locked off shot where it's just this <laughs> It's just the special effects happen only in one spot, <laughs> and I hate it. I fucking hate it because it's so scary. Uh, do you know how they did that? Did they just build a wax man? And they build a wax man and just shine a hot light. They on melted him, right? Yeah, they That's melted. So him. cool. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, uh, I'm just gonna do a, a brief little ad read here, and then we'll get back to Please. the final terrors of today. Okay. As I mentioned earlier, today's episode of Filmhouse is brought to you by HIMS. 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35 and often don't even realize it's happening until it's too late to do something about it. It's not too late. You can turn to him for hymns.com, a solution for men's hair loss. HIMS connects you with real doctors and medical grade solutions to treat hair loss. No waiting room, no awkward doctor's visits. You can get prescription solutions uh, shipped directly to your door. A friend of mine with a great head of hair is using hymns because he noticed his hairline slowly creeping back on one side. Uh, he says he feels a sense of relief knowing that he's taking steps toward hair loss prevention. Mm, so you go, there nice. you go. Uh, you can order now. Our listeners get a trial month of hymns for just $5 today right now while supplies last. You can see the website for full details. This would cost you hundreds of dollars if you went to a doctor or a pharmacy. So go to forhims.com slash filmhouse. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash filmhouse. And uh, as always, the health of our viewers is our first priority. So we ask that you keep the same in mind for you and make sure a product is right for you before you use it. And now talk back to your to doctors. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to your doctors before you do anything. What was that movie with Macaulay Culkin wearing the glasses and he gets killed by bees? My girl. My girl. My girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was fucked up. Thomas J. It ne I never found it as fucked up as much as I did uh, hilarious. So, <laughs> well, I, for me, it was the funeral after or something like when she's well, The grandma crying. comes in and she goes like, oh, my fanny. I've talked <laughs> about it several times before, but do you think, do you think they, he was wearing a little white suit. In the funeral, yeah. Scene. yeah. Do you think Thomas J owned the white suit, or someone had to go and say, "Here are the measurements for my dead son." They had I to, want go you to make him a little white suit. They so had to say the measurements. They had to say the measurements. I don't think he owned a little white I, suit. No. I think every year on his birthday, his parents make him a white death suit. Just in case, <laughs> just in case, just in case, case they need every to year use it gets it. bigger. Uh, I don't know, Elisa. <laughs> have we ever talked about this on? Uh, I don't know that we've ever really talked about this, but Elisa and I once ran a comedy Twitter account called Eulogy for Thomas J. Really? <laughs> we did. Where this we is would, like seven years ago. Yeah, where we would, it was like his still here. picture. Yeah, we'll look it up. Uh, where his photo was there, and then we would make jokes about Thomas J. and shit on him. <laughs> like basically say the town was glad he was dead, and like all kinds of things That's funny. about Thomas J. That's what funny. was it exactly, James? Eulogy for Thomas J. The, was, the number four? Uh, I don't know. 
It may have been. I wonder if Twitter, yeah, like Twitter would have deleted, deactivated. Yeah, would you really? Maybe. I mean, it has has been inactive. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless someone requested it. Yeah, I know. Usually, that they'll save that. It goes to the know. Internet Archives in Congress or whatever. I don't know, but yeah, check Congress.gov. <laughs> it's probably there. <laughs> Oh, I also have on my list here, because I made a list. Oh. Uh, Troll 2, before it became a cult sensation, I did watch it on TV. Whoa. Not knowing anything. On USA? Yeah, probably. Which which scene? Uh, The scene where two people are in the trailer, and they are uh, one, they make popcorn because their sex is so hot. Was very confusing for me. (laughs) Another scene where someone is like in a potted plant, and they have, they're like, I think they get tr- trimmed or something. And then the scene where they're eating all of the green, the green food at dinner. Mm-hmm. Well, all of that really, I mean, really weirded me out. It was, I went over to my grandma's yearly tradition for Christmas. Mm-hmm. And it was on the TV. And it was the very end where they're like, everything's good. Everything's okay. It's all over. And then he's like, where are mom and dad? And he goes upstairs and his mom and dad are like in the bathtub made out of plants and all the trolls are like eating them alive. Oh my gosh. Um, I've never seen this movie. It sounds terrible. I was so young that I then grew up thinking that I had dreamed that yeah. until the trailer for worst, best worst movie uh, came out. Ew, Same. this is gross. <laughs> Oh my oh, god, is. what the is fuck? This, is this what? Yeah, I've never seen the whole thing. I've only yeah. seen the end. I found it. Eulogy for Thomas J. Oh. Uh, yeah. it's, the, it's eulogy, the number four. He can't see without his glasses or pee standing up. That's a quote from Veda Sultanfus. Uh, <laughs> because he's so young, and so he's probably still sitting down. Thomas J's <laughs> first kiss, Veda Sultanfus. Thomas J's second kiss, the kiss of death. Uh, <laughs> it's better to have stung and lost than to never have stung at all. <laughs> These are not funny. There's a, and it, there is even a tumbler for it because some of the jokes are too long. Uh, there was another Thomas J at school. He just became Thomas. <laughs> uh, nearly the whole ta- town came out to pay their respects at the funeral. Those bees were truly loved. <laughs> Because bees die when they Right, because the bees die when they stink. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what, what, look at us. <laughs> There's a quote from Thomas J. BRB, swarm of bees. <laughs> 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 There's a lot of them. We did really? a lot of this. Uh, yeah. I don't remember any of those. Oh, well. <laughs> what oh, else is on your list? The Gate. Oh. Yeah, that. The Gate starring what's-his-face. That's where they break into little pieces, right? Like, it's like a... Human body or oh. something that then breaks up into a bunch of little Tiny guys. little trolls. Yeah. yeah. Scary claymation troll transforms into it. Uh, things that really freaked me out were uh, when the dead dog, when the kid thinks that his mother who died came back, the glasses kid, and it turns out it's just a dead dog. <laughs> and then the man in the wall, the man who lives in the wall, uh, and then also at some point someone uses, I believe, a high heel to stab out someone else's eye. Oh. Their hand eye or their eye oh, eye? Oh, there is a hand eye too. Yeah, someone has a hand eye and the kid uses glass cool. to stab his own hand. Yeah, I kind of, I, I wanted to get Bones' opinion because he is a kid now and I, I was sort of wondering whether now in this mindset he would never never want like her to see. Yeah, like what mm-hmm. he's going to limit. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. like, like I was saying before, my parents limited this stuff until I was like probably 13 or 14. Mm-hmm. Uh, Usually horror movies, uh, action movies. My dad was okay with, um, but but the uh, but it was horror movies that I think. So so for me, I ended up maturing a little a little slower because the last movie that really scared the shit out of me, I was I think it was eighteen, was Blair Witch Project. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, and I just got really lucky because I saw Blair Witch. Oh my gosh, what, what the happened? fuck? Um, I saw Blair Witch in the theaters the first weekend where everybody still didn't know if it was real or fake. Oh, so, yeah. Um, can I? <laughs> it was great. It was, And it scared the fuck out of me, and I'll never forget Th- This it. is really going to date. I mean, it was dating us both, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I went to see Blair Witch because I read an article in the Toronto Star newspaper about how how great it was. Yeah, that's what, that's what happened to me. And so then I was like, oh, this movie, like, apparently it's super scary. Um, so last month, like, one of my friends, she hadn't heard of it. Like, so we went um, when it opened, and we were like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. But uh, 
I read about it in the newspaper. That, Went that, to that, see it. that last scene. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's a newspaper? Yeah, <laughs> that so last scene, young and last scene in, Blair, in Blair Witch when you're, you see the kid in the, the corner. The handprints. You see the yeah. kid in the corner. That still freaks me out to this day. It's and, the, and Blair Witch holds true to that rule, which is if they don't show the monster, yep. it's the scariest thing you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. and, and because they never show it, they never yeah. show the witch. And that still it still bothers me to this day. The sh tent shaking. Oh man, that that's that's a great. And you you know how they shot that, right? They just had people outside well, shaking. What it. they did was they told the actors. <laughs> oh yeah, they yeah. They told yeah. the actors they're like, we're gonna do something to you yeah. tonight, we're, and we're not telling you what it is, but it's gonna happen, and we're not telling you when, and we're not telling you what it is. So they woke them up. And they said, whenever you wake up, turn on those cameras. And that's what they did to them. Nice. It's um, like Bowfinger. <laughs> <laughs> this is Great like, film. And this, I feel like almost every horror game that we play is based on Blair Witch. Yeah. Because yeah. like everything that I see in a horror game now reminds me of Blair Witch, which is, which is th basically this scene when they're walking through a uh, burned out house and they're looking for something and finally they find signs of life uh, and it ends up being a witch. Okay, but what about Blair Witch 2? <laughs> Book of Shadows? Book of Shadows. Because I never saw it. Did they show the witch in that I one? I saw it in theaters. I don't think so. I think it's just no? like one by one they all get possessed. I don't even think there's a witch. Yeah, I don't know. No. I don't Isn't it, it pagan ritual shit? Yeah, something like that. I saw it in theaters and that was the end of it. That was oh. the end of that story. Didn't I, leave any That was in impact. theaters? Yeah. It was. Oh, yeah. absolutely. 100% it was. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was a big deal at the time. Yeah, it um, was. I remember that. I definitely went to, I think I went to see that with my friend that I saw this with. How do you guys feel about the paranormal activities? Oh yeah, those are really scary too. Well, there was one Halloween release and I watched all three, like pretty close back together. Did it? Was, they're fun. They're fun things. Was that, was that me? Yes, Are you sure? it was you. When I, I went and saw Paranormal Activity 2 with a girl and I pretended to be scared. Nice. So she nice. Did you put your arm around her? Oh yeah. You went, yeah, ah! Uh, oh, like that, you did that. <laughs> so she could comfort you. Uh, it was more just to pretend that I didn't think it was really stupid. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. This is this is where he starts flipping out. It was the handprints that got me. I was like, oh no, yeah, little tiny handprints. A bunch of kids. It's not exactly a horror movie, but something that stuck with me for a really, really long time was Seven. Oh, Seven. Oh, yeah. So yeah. freaky. The, the imagery of the man tied down to the bed who's still alive. The who sloth. He looks, like, looks like well, <laughs> sloth was dead. No, he, no, no, he sorry. Breathed. Gluttony was dead. Yeah. Yeah. Sloth, yeah, was looked like a Guillermo del Toro character. Yeah. It like bitten off his lips and shit. And he was still alive. And yeah. I was like, that's not that's not okay. Oh, and then man. when they go down into that sex club and they find the dude, he's got the giant blade strapped uh. to his dick, and he's like, I didn't be trying to do it, I didn't want to do it. I was like, like that was the kind of shit that hung with me for a really long time. Seven's such a good movie. And I watched that not as an adult, but I probably was probably like There it is. Like he's getting it. You're gonna get killed. Something. Turn around! <laughs> Jeez. Oh, well, you're dead. Well, I think that's where we'll end it. Uh, thank you for rehashing some of these childhood dramas with me today. I don't like it. Uh, I'm excited that we're all, good, probably yeah. all going to go see Hereditary as an office. No. I mean, I, 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 you guys could go. Okay. <laughs> Can I call you guys if I have nightmares tonight? Yes. Wait, this is going to give you nightmares just because we talked about scary stuff? This is, uh, those gremlins, man. <laughs> oh, geez. Well, thanks for watching. Be a little bit beyond that, the first sixty percent, I don't give two shits about. Like, <laughs> oh, Hawkeye's is... evil now, and like, it's not, it's not that interesting. There's a one fun moment where they fight in the woods. I like, yeah. I like that one. That's but, the only like, one I can remember. Yeah. I can remember Hawkeye being evil or whatever. He, he, was, he gets possessed. Yeah, there's, there's like a little things too, like the shield helicarrier and things. 